Today we're going to talk about the stirring of your soul. What stirs your soul? You see, in every single person that has ever been born is a longing in their soul, a stirring in their soul that says there must be something more than this. And that's what causes us to rise up above the mundane, above just existing, to try and work for a better world. Today, we're going to look at a fisherman, a fisherman called Andrew, who realized that there was something so much more than just being a fisherman. I know for some people that's a big uh, statement already. You see, Andrew grew up in Bethsaida, which means the house of fishing. He was a fisherman. He was a fisherman's son, and a, um, his dad's father was probably a fisherman too. And so he grew up to be a fisherman. But he recognized that there was something so much more, a longing in his soul that wasn't being fulfilled by just catching fish. Perhaps you're a bit like Andrew, is that you, you don't really, I mean, you don't mind your job or, or, or what you do, but there's something deeper, a longing in you that gets you thinking, that gets you striving. And so Andrew decided to follow one of the holy men of the day, the day, a man called John the Baptist. Now, John was baptizing people in the Jordan, and Andrew became one of his disciples. And, and one day, after following him, looking to find that thing that stirs his soul, right, he started to get an inkling of it. And then John said these words, I am the voice of of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the path for the Lord. And what John is talking about is the Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah, a Savior, the Son of God. And they'd been waiting and waiting and waiting. But John points them to a prophecy in Isaiah that says there will be a prophet that comes just before saying, make straight the path because Jesus is coming. And John says, I am he. Now, Andrew's grown up in the Jewish, Jewish faith. He knows about this Messiah. He studied the things, the, the, the different scriptures and would have learned that for his own bar mitzvah. But the next day, the very next day, the scripture tells us John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And so suddenly, just in a moment, they trust their teacher who is pointing them to a greater truth. And he says, there he is. And so they leave John and become followers of Jesus. One of the most simple acts of faith. Andrew was one of those two disciples. And we're going to follow his story a little bit further because now Andrew and this other unnamed disciple are following Jesus, right? And so the scripture continues. And when Jesus turned around and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? I mean, you can imagine you, you, you're walking through, through the, 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 the shops and you find these people following you and you kind of turn back and say, what are you doing? And they said, Rabbi which means teacher. In other words, we would like to be your students, your disciples. And they followed up with saying, where are you staying? In other words, can we come and spend time with you? Jesus says, come and see. I want you to hold on to those words, come and see, because come and see is a simple invitation. And it's a very powerful word. They got to spend time with Jesus and they remained with him for that day. And in that day, something happened in them where they simply believed. Andrew recognizes that the stirring in his soul is stirring him towards this man called Jesus. And he takes a simple step of faith to become a disciple of Jesus. Now notice that he hasn't seen Jesus perform miracles. 
He hasn't learned a lot of Jesus' teaching. He hasn't read the Bible. He hasn't seen the resurrection. He hasn't seen Jesus walk on water. But he recognizes at a soul level that this must be God. Right? And so he's inviting you into that same kind of story. Now, I've got to tell you that Jesus is not hiding. Jesus makes his, his, himself plain to us in the scriptures. And over the centuries, people have debated and theorized, is there a God? Isn't there a God? Is Jesus God? Is something else God? But if you look at the greatest men and women in history, they've all come to a moment where they stop thinking with their head and start believing with their heart. And they simply believe. Now, I want to just be honest here and say that it's not just enough to believe that Jesus was a man who lived and he was a good man. If Jesus is God, then he is the hope that we long for in our soul. And we will not be fulfilled until we find and give our lives fully to Jesus. And so... The second thing we need to do is we need to simply be honest. Be honest where you are. God sent his son into the world so that we could see him, engage him and believe in him. And I want to ask you a couple of very important questions about this. Firstly, what do you believe now? What do you believe in now? Do you believe there is a God? And is there a better candidate for God than Jesus? You see, we can scrutinize Jesus. We can look at how he walked on waters. We can look at his teaching. We can look at his miracles. We can look at the way he treated people and ask ourselves, is this the face of God? But we also need to be honest and say, if not, then what? then what do we believe in? And is it satisfying that longing in our soul? For Andrew, Jesus moved his soul. And I hazard a guess, Jesus has moved your soul many, many times. But the world loves to give us doubts. Now, here's the thing, is if you're believing in something other than Jesus... You need to scrutinize that in the same way you do Jesus. Jesus is not afraid of scrutiny. But many of the things we believe in are. Because when we start to scrutinize, we will realize that they do not satisfy the longing in our soul. And they do not live, lead to life. Now, there are different ideologies and religions and, and well, ways of life. There are people who do not believe in God. Then what do they believe in? Do they believe in now? And does that, when you look at that, does that look like something worth believing in? To just make yourself at the center of everything? What inspires you to do great acts then, if it is not God? Even churches, there are many churches when you look at them, you do not see Jesus. Because when you break it down, they're not pointing to Jesus. They're pointing to themselves. Let's be honest. Let's be simply honest that there is no candidate who even remotely looks like God outside of Jesus. And if we look at Jesus, we will see the face of God. And will we simply believe? Remember, God doesn't want us to work it all out. That we do afterwards. As we give our life to Jesus, we then start following him and we observe the world through different eyes. And it just gives real credence to our faith. And so the story continues. Right? And there's a third action. So it's to simply believe, simply be honest, and then to simply invite others to come and see. We read in John chapter 1, 41 to 42. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated in the anointed one. And he brought him to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas. 
which is translated Peter. If you love people, then you want them to have the same belief in Jesus. Because it is a good thing to believe in Jesus. It changes our whole world. Now, many of you will say, but I'm not convincing. I've tried to tell people about Jesus. But I want to challenge you on that. I think you're very convincing. Think about it. When you bake a cake and you say, I baked you a cake, you offer it to people and they take it. Why? Not just because they can see cake, because they're trusting your testimony. You're saying, I have baked a great cake and they believe in you. When you go on a great holiday, you come back and you tell the world and everybody starts Googling, I want to go on this holiday. When you watch a great show on TV, what do you do? You tell people. I remember going in South Africa. I was on a visit to South Africa with family and Jen and myself went to a movie and I was absolutely convinced that I could not stay awake in that movie. I was struggling to make it through the adverts at the beginning. And then the show began and I was enthralled and I was entranced. It was the greatest showman. Two nights later, I took the whole family to go, not because they'd seen the posters, but because they believed my testimony. Our whole life is convincing people of things that we believe in. But if we don't really believe in our heart, then we become unconvincing. I remember when I first started out selling, I was selling dinner plates. I had to work really hard because I actually knew I was talking absolute nonsense. Life does not center around dinner plates. And I didn't stay in that industry long because I didn't believe. You see why I'm saying it's so important to start believing? Because when you start to believe, that longing in your heart starts to be filled. Is a saying that there is a God-shaped vacuum in each one of us. And we can try and fit anything into it. But only one person fits, and that's Jesus. When you invite Jesus in, somehow you feel so much better about life. That longing now is drawing you towards God, to being the best person you can be, to being a Christian. And when you are converted in the heart, then the act of simply sharing becomes so important. Churches rely on people believing. And the reason is this, when you believe, you belong. And when you belong, you say to others, come and see. Come and see this church service. Come and come to Bible study. Watch this video clip. All right? We saw it this week with, with a, a video clip that went viral in England, which was people worshipping God together. What was convincing was not that it was a music video, there's plenty of those, but that it led to Jesus and people who shared it, shared it with passion. I must have had 20, 30 people share that one with me. It all starts with that simple act of believing, but it leads to you sharing that simple act of believing with the people you love and the people you know and inviting them come, coming to encounter Jesus too. I just want to say at the end here, so many of us have been flirting with Christianity for so long. We might call ourselves Christians, we might go to church, we might say we believe in Jesus, but if you don't believe that he is the Son of God, then you will never be transformed. But when you do, Jesus comes to live in your heart and you find your reason, just like Andrew did. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in this moment, I hazard a guess there are many people who feel uncomfortable because they're not sure if they believe. Yet if they're honest in their heart, they know there is something happening because they've got a longing to be together as a church, a longing to be together, learning and growing in Christ. So Lord, we pray that we would stop overthinking it and just start believing. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we would believe 
and find a way of sharing that belief with the people we love and inviting them to come and see Jesus too. We pray this in and through your precious name. Amen.